Today, I'm going to show you how I make these rings. I get a lot of comments like, are these rings sterling silver? How do you make them? Does it take you forever? So, it doesn't take long. And they are sterling silver. And I'm going to go through that with you guys. So, first thing you do when you want to make a ring is you pick whatever stone you want. And I have, this is a tray of stones. I have a, I have a lot more than this. These are just little good ring size um, stones. So you pick whichever stone that you're gonna work with. I'm gonna work with this. This is a little amethyst stone. So what we have to do first is make the piece of metal, uh, form the piece of metal that's gonna hold this stone in on the ring, which is this. This is a bezel wire. This is called um, bezel wire. And it comes in a coil. It comes coiled up. This is just a strip of it. And this is actually fine silver. So it's not actually sterling silver. It's just fine silver. Uh, which is actually a higher grade of silver. So here's a coil. This is a whole bag of it. So what you do is I actually have this mandrel here. You just take and you kind of guesstimate like so this stone here is five millimeters so that's pretty small i'm throwing it um and i just kind of go to on this mandrel where i think um five millimeters is it's just kind of an eyeball thing and then i hold it with one hand and i just kind of wrap it with the other so then you end up with something that looks like that so we'll put this away that later now you can see that just fits right on there like that and if you have a good fit then it's on there it's in there so then you just need to trim that so now here's our little bezel i like to put it back over the stone one more time just to see if it make sure i did everything right and at this point, if it's a little bit too small, it's not a big deal. You'd rather it be too small than too big at this point. So what I do now is we have to solder this together and it needs to be closed. So I just take this and just kind of go right down over that seam. But you just want to make that little seam fit up there. So now it's good and flush. Here's our bezel. And we're just gonna, I'm gonna lay it on my solder block here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of this stuff here. This is flux and it cleans the metal, make sure there's no impurities there. So I just kinda, just kinda dab it a little bit for something that small, you don't have to have a lot. And then I'm gonna take my solder here h for hard e for easy and i actually already have some sitting out here on this block so what i'm gonna do is pick some up and then i'm gonna flow it on here so this is called pick soldering when you heat your solder up and then you place it with a pick because what i could actually do if i wanted is pick a little piece of this up this solder first and then lay it under this bezel and then use the heat to draw it up but i'm so used to pick soldering that's just what I do. So we're just going to pick up, and this really should be a pretty small piece. Just going to pick up a tiny piece, heat this up, and drop it on there. And it's that fast. And then, of course, now it's very hot. So. I have a little thing of water over there that I stick this in so that I can then pick it up. That's called quenching. And then there it is. It's your little piece there. Now you go. You see that solder on there. What we have to do now is take this and get it round again because now it's not round. So we'll work on that. We bring this back out since we want this to be round. And we run it back down on this mandrel here. And then I actually take a ball peen hammer and I just kind of um, lightly hammer it. 
Doesn't have to be too serious here. Just kind of, just what I want to do is I want to get it back to the round shape. But I also want to flatten out that solder uh, seam if I got too much solder on there. So it's kind of, it's kind of round again. And then we're going to see if it fits. And it fits fine. So now we will sand. Nothing too glamorous about this part. It's just a lot of sanding. After sanding for a while, you want to go back to your stone. See if I can pick the stone up here and see how it fits again. Because you want it to be a certain height and you don't want to sand so much away that you can't put it back. For me now, that's a pretty good height. If you can kind of see there. I'm pretty happy with that. And how you know, it's just kind of an eyeball thing to be honest. You want enough material left so that you really feel like it pushes over the side of this stone and grabs it. But I've just done these, I've done hundreds of these, so I just kind of know where I like it. You don't want to cover up the pretty stone, but you don't want there to be a lack of material there to hold it in. So it's kind of a, a delicate balance, but that's pretty good. Now you have to find a piece of metal to solder um, this little thing, this little bezel you've made to the back. So for little tiny things like that, I'll find scrap pieces. This is a scrap piece I have, and this little corner will be enough for that stone to set on. Now you can have like a whole sheet, but there's no reason to cut into this big sheet when I could just use this little scrap piece. So I just kind of, I'm just going to cut off the extra. I'll probably hammer that a little bit just to get it flat so that I'm not soldering to a warped or uneven surface. So that's pretty much all it takes just to get it flat. And it doesn't matter the surface. You might think, good Lord, that's what looks terrible. It's all hammered and scratched. This isn't going to matter because this will disappear when we do the final step. No one's going to see this. So now you set your stone aside. Make sure you know which one it was if you have more than, if you have several on the bench. And then that will sit on there like that. And then we'll solder it together. Back to our solder station. A very important note here is make sure you know which way this went. There is an up and there is a down. So I just wanna make sure that it's the same, the same, uh, facing the same direction. So we get more flux. This time we only need to put flux on this bottom piece. And then we will put this one here. So just like before, we're going to heat it up and I'm going to use this solder this time because in my mind, I've got this line drawn and I know that this is easy or medium and this is hard. I'm just pick this a little piece up and it really doesn't take much. That's a tiny piece, a little tiny piece on the end of this. So just a little bubbling is the flux burning off. So have no fear. Don't worry. And I'm just going to set this down on the edge. Oop. And there it went. So this is very hot. I couldn't pick it up, but we can put it in this water that I've got and quench it. So now we're going to cut off the extra around uh, our bezel there. I use shears to cut around this. You do just kind of have to be careful because this is small and dainty, but you don't have to saw this out. You can, you could use a jeweler saw to saw this out, but I don't, I don't, I'm not worried about it because a lot of the times if I get an order, I may get an order for, I may be making 20 of these at a time and I got to do something that saves time. I can't be too worried about sawing each one of these out. As long as you're careful because you don't want to cut into your bezel there or it'll be ruined I 
once I get this filed, to have, I'm pretty pleased with it. All the rough edges are gone. I finished cleaning this up with my flex shaft. This is my flex shaft. It's like a fancy Dremel, but it's made by Fordham, and they call this a flex shaft. Um, so there's a pedal in the bottom of my bench here. This is operated by a pedal, and I just use this sandpaper cartridge to finish doing the cleanup work on this. I decided to do a voiceover to explain this step. A lot of jewelers will do what they call pickle. They will clean each piece that they make in an acid solution before they go to the next step, before they solder the next piece on. For me, I didn't do that here because this is such a small piece. All I have to do is sand the bottom. If I make sure the bottom is good and sanded, it'll be clean enough to go on to the next step. And then the back will kind of clean up some. Solder likes to flow where it's clean. It is, solder doesn't like to go where it's nasty. And this is going to have to get soldered to the band. So, in a lot of people's eyes, and probably in my eyes too, this is the hardest part. Making the bezel, then soldering it, and then sanding the seam out. So, the next part is you have to fi figure out how you're going to make your band. And that's going to depend on what size of a ring uh you need to make what size does somebody wear so you have to know what size they wear to make the ring so i'm gonna make this one in a size five because the person that i'm making this for has the two tiny fingers so size five is what we're gonna do i'll show you how we do it i have a handy dandy chart here this is my handy dandy chart that tells me how many how many millimeters I need to cut my wire to for it to be whatever size. So here, here's all my sizes. So there I go to a size five and I go out here and I say, I'm going to use 16 gauge wire, which means I need to cut this to 53.1. Now there's actually a little trick to this and I'll tell you the trick. If you are going to make a ring band with texture on it and you're going to texture that ring band, you need to go probably um, a half a size to a whole size down because when you texture that band, it's going to stretch up. So I'm just going to make a five. I'm not, I'm not putting any texture on this, but if I was, I might go to a four and I might do 50.6 millimeters instead of 53. I don't have to worry about it. You just have to make sure that you get your gauge of wire correct. And 16 gauge is about as light as I'm willing to go for a ring. I do a lot of 14, sometimes 12. I don't really do a whole lot with 10. But that's just a design decision that you have to make. What size and what gauge of wire and what type of wire am I going to use? Because you have to know that before you can select your correct millimeter, your correct length on this chart. So I'm going to go back out to a 5, make sure that's 53.1. That's what I'm going to cut my metal to. Here's my 16 gauge round wire. This is probably dead soft. That's how I get all my wire. You can get it dead soft, half hard or hard. And that just talks about the uh, hardness of the wire. So is it soft? I want all my stuff soft so I can work with it. Or has it been work hardened? And for me, there's no reason to get work hardened uh, metal when I'm gonna be heating it up and reworking it. And it's gonna be hardened anyway later when I finish hammering it or when I finish putting it in the tumbler. So now we have to measure. I use just one of these brass millimeter calipers. I don't, I have a set of digital calipers, but I don't use that. Um, if you wanted to get specific, like 53.1 or 50.6, the only way to be exact like that would be to use uh, digital calipers. But I just round it. I'm not worried about that. Um, so this is what I use. So I'm going to put it on 53. Now that it's cut, again, we, we have to, in everything that you solder in all of jewelry work, your ends need to be cleaned up and they need to be flush because solder doesn't like to go where it's not flat and clean. So same sort of deal. I'm going to file. I'm just going to file real quick. Make sure the ends are flat. Here's me a nice flat end. 
So what I do usually, I don't, the ring band, you don't have to worry about it being flat right now because in the process of me making sure I get a good seam, this band is going to become unflat. So I usually just bend it like that. Take my pliers. And I usually just take the ends, both ends like that, because I, I care more about there being a, um, a good seam than I do about it being round at this stage because we will make it round again. Give myself some flux again. You do this every time. I prefer this liquid flux. I don't like spray flux. I'm not worried about spray flux. I don't like to keep spraying. It gets on my nerves. Just pick me up some solder here. Then we just heat this bad boy up and then drop that solder in the front of that seam. There we go. Pick it up and put it in this water over here. It's cool enough to touch. So as you can see now, you know, this is going to be a ring vein and it's not round. It's funky. So we're going to have to make this round again. The first step in that for me is I use these pliers here. I'll just kind of pinch on it like that and get it semi-rounded up like this. This is the actual ring mandrel, and you can see it's numbered. Those are your sizes. So I need to make this a size 5. So it's really close. I just need to hammer it a little bit, clean it up some, make it a size 5. And if anybody saw, I definitely just hammered my finger. It felt very good. So this is just stretching it to the right size and making it perfectly round again till it fits. One thing you do have to do is once you know that this is a size five, you have to make sure to size five this way and this way, because there's a such thing as having one side of the ring bigger than the other. So these are both the same size and we got ourselves a round little ring here. Actually, before we put them together, we have to make sure that this band is flat. We don't want it to be warped. So the way I do it is with a block of wood and a hammer. Might even do a little bit of this here. And make sure it looks pretty good. Just got to put them together and then we'll have a ring. Now we just have to put these two together. Again, I've not cleaned this metal yet. I've not thrown it in the pickle or the solution. I don't really feel like I have to at this point. The back of this is clean. This is clean enough to put them together. The reason you would put them in the pickle and clean them between each time is to make sure that no fire scale builds up or that you don't end up with what they call i call ghostly shadows in the metal which is a uh, fire scale that's kind of a, a deeper than a few than just the surface it's like a few layers down and that can be hard to get out and you might not want that in the finish of your metal i know that when i get done with this i'm going to liver a sulfur it i'm going to put a gel on there that makes it dark on purpose so it's going to hide anything that may be in there, and I don't think there'll be a shadow in there anyway, because this is this is only one joint. You usually run into ghostly shadows if you um, if you heat and reheat and heat and reheat the piece if you have a bunch of solder seams. So good enough for me. When we get this together, we'll clean it uh, in the pickle, and then we'll polish it up and set the stone. How I solder the band to to this little uh, part that's going to hold my stone is just some some very advanced technology. Um, they actually make ring pliers, like ring um, tweezers, I mean, but and I have a set of them, but this works just as good for me. So I set my little piece up there like that. Pull a bit of flux on the back of it. One quick thing about um, where the seam is. So this seam right here in this ring band where I joined it together, I'm going to take that seam and put it facing down right on the bottom of this back plate. I'm going to solder it up like that. You'll never see it. 
It's easy, it's fast, it's, it makes for good cleanup. However, if I ever thought there was a chance in the future that I was gonna resize this ring, I would not do that. I would have to take this seam and point it out where it would be sitting like here at the back of your finger when you wear it because you don't want more than two joints in a ring because it makes it weak. So since I know I'm not gonna ever resize it, I'm gonna go ahead, save myself some time and some cleanup and put that seam face in the bottom. And line that up kind of how I want it. Get it good and flat like that. Very technical. And then solder it together. Same type of deal. Just pick that solder up. Heat this piece up a little bit. This is a little bit different because you have a heat sink. These tweezers are a heat sink. Not too different, but a little bit different. Okay. Now, do not grab that. Do not make a mistake of touching that. I have done that and third degree burned myself. This is very hot. So if you don't pick up this whole tweezer and put it in the water, you can use you, these tweezers to pick up this ring. These are uh, heat protectant cross locking tweezers. So I can touch this part. This part's not hot, but that part would be very hot. So we'll set those aside. And voila. I put my pickle, my cleaning solution in a crock pot and I keep it hot. It goes in water, so it's just water and my cleaning solution in here. And I'm gonna put this ring in there. What I actually use instead of, they make like an acid to use for this, but I don't want to do that. I use that, it's called pH down. It's a sodium bisulfate, so yeah, that works, and it's not toxic if you touch it. It won't eat your skin off, so. It's been sitting in there for just a minute. That's already done. So we'll get it out, wherever it's at. There it is, dry it off. Ooh, look at them dirty hands. Them hands is filthy. It's that soot from soldering. But you end up we well, you end up with something that looks like this. And that looks kind of gross, but that's pretty clean. That's kind of got the ghostly white color, which is good. That means it's clean. Now I'm gonna use my flex shaft and we're gonna clean this up some. My cleanup work will be done with these two bits. I'll sand it a little bit, and then this is a bristle disc, and I'll hit it with this, and it'll look a little better, and it'll be time to set the snow. Change bits. And voila, you can actually see even from here that this is just a little bit shinier, it's just a little bit cleaner. It's funny, sometimes I'll use these bits to buff my nails because they're kind of, kind of rough. Now, we're ready to set the stone. We pick our stone back up. There it is. And we're going to use a vise that's going to hold our ring. And some stone setting tools. So this vise will hold the ring still long enough for me to be able to put this little stone in it. And if you did everything correctly, if your uh, bezel is the right thing, then this stone will pop on in. Voila, there you have it. It popped right in. Took a little bit of convincing, but it popped in. So now we're going to use these two tools to push that metal down. To do that, I just kind of brace this here. And I just start pushing it in, pushing the metal in. Kind of work opposite corners, kind of diagonally, side to side. The metal's just gonna kind of fold on over to this stone here. And when you push on it like that for a little while, and you feel like you're done with that, I take this, this is a bezel roller, and then this is where the real action happens. 
where I really roll that metal over. It's kind of hard to see. I might wonder if I could do it right-handed. No, I can't. <laughs> so we're just kind of rolling it over. I feel satisfied with that. So I'm going to take it out. And then, there you have it. It's done. But I just got one more step that I want to do. I also like to make sure that it's back in round. Occasionally doing that will take it out of... Take it out of round. So I've got to put it back. So we get our ring mandrel back out. And this time, all you got to do is just kind of run it down here and twist a little bit. That helped. One last thing that we're going to do is clean it up with one more bit. I like to go around this bezel where this stone is. I like to go around it with this pumice wheel because it really cleans the edge up. It kind of burnishes it. It makes it look good, but it also just helps hold that stone in. So then you're kind of left with the little black cities all over it. See there? Just get a toothbrush and... And that's what it looks like. There's a ring. Let me see if it fits me. Ha <laughs> ha! It does. It does fit me. Now we're going to do what I call the liver of sulfur, which is just a patina gel. We're going to darken it up. This is hot water, water that's been microwaved. So you just put some hot water in here. And of course, once this is dedicated for liver sulfur, can't be used for anything else. You gotta keep your working glassware separate. Can't have it be with anything else. Can't use anything else with it. So this is the liver sulfur gel that I put in there. And I'm going to tell you right now, it stinks. It smells like sulfur. It smells like rotten eggs. So it turns the water yellow. So then we just drop the ring in. And then we can get it out. It's probably already, um, oh yeah, you see it turning black. So this stuff is stinky, but it turns your metal black. But it gives this really cool patina. It gives what nature would take. I don't know, however many months or years to do, and you can instantly do it. <laughs> yeah. Once you dry it off, all you have to do is get some steel wool and kind of buff this, and that steel wool will take this black off. So you just remove as much as you want to remove. And um, I remove quite a bit because I really like, I mean, I like the dark look, but I also like... It just smooths it out, I think. So So then you can remove whatever you want to remove. Don't forget to go around the inside of the band. So this is what you end up with before... This is before we tumble it. And I'll explain what that is here in just a second. The next step is to take the ring and place it in this rock tumbler. Now this is actually... you. I don't know if you could tumble rocks in this or not. It's probably actually made for jewelry. And this is a mix of stainless steel shot, different shapes. And that, mixed with a little bit of water and Dawn, is going to polish this ring up. It's going to get in every little nook and cranny of the metal, polish it, and it's also going to work harden it. So when we take it out, it'll be shiny, and it'll be really strong, and it'll be ready to wear. Time to take this off and we will empty this out and check out our ring. To do that, all we need to do is put this in the sink, run a little water, 
Just to get those bubbles out of there so I can see where this ring is at. So we'll rinse it off and then we'll take it and we'll see what it looks like. Brought it outside, it's a little easier to see in the natural light. So that is the finished product. Looks pretty good. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me and seeing how I make a ring. Sometimes I'll make 10 or 15 of those a day and it's usually a pretty fast process. It only takes me probably, well, from start to finish, if I was going to do one start to finish, it might take me 15 minutes, but I usually work on kind of an assembly line. So I'll kind of make all the bezels, solder all the back plates, and that kind of thing. So hope you had fun. God bless you. God keep you. God watch you. We'll catch you at the next one.